so hello dear students so welcome you all to the session uh, here at the session we are going to uh, discuss some of the very important and uh, some questions which you feel very difficult okay from your aiit 5 class 11 neat exam okay so let us start with the first question so the first question for uh, today session is the wavelength of an emission light obtained for helium plus during an electronic transition n is equal to 3 to n is equal to 1 plus and r is the red box so we have to find out the wavelength that is lambda for helium plus okay so we know that just a second we know that 1 by lambda is equal to r into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square into z square okay so where n1 where n1 is the uh, one for us and uh, n2 is three for our question okay ground state and excited state And is it value that is atomic number for helium is two? Okay, substitute all these value here. So what you will get R into one by one square that is one and one by three square that is nine. And the atomic number is two, so two square. Okay, so taking LCM, we will get uh, nine minus one by nine into two square which is four. Okay, which will be equal to R into eight by nine into four, which is equal to R into eight four is thirty two, right? R into thirty two divided by nine. Okay, so what is one by lambda value? It is thirty two nine by R. But we need lambda only. We need only lambda. So just reverse it. It is nine by thirty two R. It is nine by thirty two R. Got it. So this is the wavelength. This is the wavelength in angstrom of an emission line obtained for helium plus. Okay. So where it is given, it is given in option D. So option D is the correct answer for this. Got it. So just substitute the values of y, y n one and y n two with atomic number. You will get the answer. Okay. This is the formula you are learning from this question. Got it. If uh, lithium two plus is given. Substitute the value for is it as three because the atomic number of lithium is three. Okay, so if the initial state and final state are uh, different, then substitute accordingly in place of n one and n two. Okay, so basically we are learning, we are uh, uh, putting this formula into this question. Got it? So this is about this, and coming to the next question, which is question number fifty eight for you. So it states that 1.5 moles of O2 combines with Mg to form the oxide MgO, and the mass of magnesium that has combined this, and that of a number of magnesium is given. So what we are asked to find out the mass of Mg, the mass of magnesium we have to find out. So before solving this question, we have to write the equation for the given thing. So what is the equation? It is magnesium reacting with oxygen to give magnesium oxide. So let me balance this equation. We have two oxygen here. So multiply here by two, and since two magnesium are there in the product side, you multiply the reactant with two. Okay, so this is the given uh, equation. So here you can see two moles of magnesium is reacting with one mole of oxygen. Okay, two moles of magnesium is reacting with one mole of oxygen means. Two into twenty-four gram of magnesium, which is equal to forty-eight gram of magnesium, is reacting with one mole of oxygen. Okay. Now, if one point that is, uh, let me take like this: if one mole of oxygen combines with forty-eight gram of magnesium, then they are asking. Like one point five mole of oxygen, right? And for one point five mole of oxygen, 
1.5 mole of oxygen how many magnesium is reacted so for 1.5 moles of oxygen for, for oxygen it will be 48 into 1.5 divided by 1 right so the 48 into 1.5 it will be 72 gram so for 1 mole of oxygen 48 gram of magnesium is reacting and for 1.5 mole of oxygen 72 gram of magnesium 72 gram of magnesium would react got it to give the uh, product mg just the ratio you have to take it and cross multiply that's all clear now coming to the next question coming to the next question that is question number 59 so you can see that 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of urea are present in 100 ml of its solution okay and the concentration of the solution is so in the options you can see the concentration is given in terms of capital m which is called as molarity okay capital m is nothing but the molarity so in terms of molarity you have to find out the concentration so what are the given data uh, the given data are the molecules of urea are given and the volume in terms of uh, milliliter it is given so what is molarity so molarity is equal to molarity is equal to the number of moles of number of moles of solute divided by volume of volume of solution volume of solution in liter this is molarity and the number of moles is not given in the question so what we have to do we have to find out the number of moles how can we find out the number of moles there are two formulas one is by using mass by molar mass but the mass of the substance substance is not given and the mass is also not given so we, we cannot use that formula and the second formula to find out the number of moles is n divided by n naught so what is this n? n is the number of particles. Number of particles. It can be atoms or it can be molecules or ions. It can be anything. Okay. And n naught is the Avogadro number. It is the Avogadro. It is the Avogadro's number. Got it. Now using this formula, we can find out the number of moles. It will be equal to. And the number of molecules of urea is given though. It is 6.022 into 10 to the power 20 molecules that is the number of particles divided by Avogadro number what is the value of Avogadro number it is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 right so this is Avogadro number now on uh, cancelling and uh, this we will get so 20 will get cancelled out and 3 will be remaining and if you take it to the numerator it will be 10 power minus 3 or 0 0.001 mole second rate okay so this is the number of moles and the volume of the solution in liter we need to find out so here 100 milliliter is given when you convert it to the liter what you will get it will be it will be 10 power minus 1 it will be 10 power minus 1 okay it will be 10 power minus 1 liter it is equal to 100 milliliter got it now substitute these two values here in molarity okay so molarity will be equal to the number of moles of solute that is 0 0.001 moles or you can substitute it as 10 power minus 3 moles. Okay, let me substitute as 10 power minus 3 moles divided by volume of solution liter that is 10 power minus 1 liter. Okay, so on cancelling out this what we will get it is 10 power minus 2 which is equal to 0 0.01 molar. Okay, so the answer is option so the concentration in terms of molarity for the given uh, criteria is 0.01 molar. Okay, this is the final answer for this question. Okay, so now let's move on to question number 60. The number of water molecules present in a drop of water being 0.018 grams. So here you have to find out the number of the water molecules, which is nothing but the number of particles. Okay. So from the mass value, mass value is given. 
So number of particles you have to get from the mass value. So how to get that? So the number of moles can be calculated from n by n naught. That is number of particles by Avogadro number. Okay. And from that, what you can do? You can get n is equal to mass by molar mass formula. Okay. Mass by molar mass formula. And mass by molar masses, the given mass is 0 0.018 gram. And the molar mass of water is 18, right? H2O. And uh, we have two hydrogens, so 2 into 1 will be 2. And for each oxygen, 16 is the atomic mass of oxygen. So it is 1 oxygen, so 1 into 16 is 16. And the total mass of water, molar mass of water is 18. So let me substitute 18 here. And you will get it as uh, 1 into 10 power minus 3 moles. Okay. Now number of moles is there. So you substitute this number of moles here in equation 1. So the number of moles is equal to n by n naught and we need only n, right? Number of particles only we have to find out. So that is equal to n into n naught. So what is the number of moles value? It is 1 into 10 power minus 3 and the n naught is nothing but the Avogadro number. So it is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. So which will be equal to 6.022 into 10 to the power 20. Okay. So this is the number of water molecules. So it is given, it is given in option D. Option D is the correct answer. Got it? We are finding out the number of moles and substituting in uh, the first equation and uh, we are getting the number of particle, which is nothing but the molecules here, number of water molecules. Okay. So this N is your number of particles. So that only we are getting. Okay. So I hope this is clear to all of you. Let me move on to the next question. That is question number 62. So here in this question, you can see two statements are given. And we have to find out the correct answer for this. So let's start with statement 1. So statement 1 says that the bond energy of the chlorine, CLCL bond, is more than the fluorine bond, FF bond. Is that right? The statement 1 is correct. Yes, the CLCL bond is uh, more, more strong compared to fluorine bond. Okay, and coming to the second statement, the shorter the bond length, more is the bond energy. Shorter the bond length, more is the bond energy. We know that bond length is inversely proportional to bond energy. Bond length is inversely proportional to bond energy. If the bond length is very short, then the bond energy is very high. So they are having inversely proportional relationship and statement 2 is also correct. Okay, statement 2 is also correct. And when you see the bond energies of chlorine and fluorine, you can uh, find or you can see that uh, CLCL bond will be having the highest bond energy value. It is very difficult to break compared to FF bond. So statement 1 and statement 2 both are correct. Okay, but uh, we have to check whether the statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. Okay. So the relation given in statement 2 is correct. Both the statements are correct. But is it true that uh, CLCL bond is more strong uh, because of its uh, uh, some other, I mean because of its uh, uh, more bond length? Clear? No, right? So the uh, reason for the, the more strong CLCL uh, bond is due to CLCL bond is more strong or uh, it is having the more bond energy due to the more lone pair, lone pair repulsion. More lone pair, lone pair repulsion in case of F2. Okay. In case of F2, the bond length is very short. And we know that each halogen will have three lone pair of electrons, right? Three lone pair of electrons. And here you can see these are the lone pairs of fluorine. These are the lone pairs of the two fluorines. And since the bond is very short, 
the two load pairs will be of uh, uh, they will be very closer to each other and there will be more load pair load pair repulsion so because of that what happens so they try to keep them very far apart the load pair of electrons try, tries to keep them very far apart <coughs> so because of this the bond between the f atom they are getting weak okay they are getting very weak so the bond energy the energy required to break the bond is nothing but the bond energy that is very less for fluorine but in case of fluorine size of fluorine is uh, bigger compared to fluorine right so the bond length will be little bit a uh, little bit uh, more bond length is more and the lone pair lone pair repulsion in case of fluorine you can see the distance is very high distance is more so the lone pair lone pair repulsion will be there but the effect is very less effect is very less so what happens so this bond remains strong and more energy is required to break the cl cl bond okay so cl cl bond is more strong and it is having more bond energy because of the less lone pair lone pair repulsion compared to fluorine okay so both statements are correct but the uh, reason that is given in statement 2 for statement 1 is wrong okay so option b is the correct answer for this question okay option b is the correct answer for this question both are true but statement 2 is not the correct explanation for statement okay fine now let's go with question number 65 in the following lewis structure of hno3 the formal charge on the oxygen atom number 3 is okay so this is actually the charge formal charge okay and we have to find out the formal charge of oxygen 3 so here is our oxygen 3 in hno3 molecule uh, so to find out the formal charge straight away substitute the thing in the uh, formula so we have one formula to find out the formal charge right so the formal charge is equal to formal charge is equal to total number of total number of valence electrons total number of valence electrons minus total number of non bonded electrons non bonded electrons minus total number of bonded electrons divided by 2 okay so now coming to this oxygen the total number of valence electrons for oxygen is 6 right for oxygen of all oxygen it is 6 only and the non bonded electron non bonded electron is nothing but the lone pair of electrons it is nothing but the lone pair of electrons so we have three lone pairs here on this oxygen number 3 so each lone pair has three electrons so you can see 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 so the non bonded electrons are six and the bonded electron you can see this oxygen is forming only one bond with nitrogen right oxygen is forming oxygen is forming only one bond with the nitrogen so in this bond we will have two electrons one bond contains two electrons right so the bonded electron will be two divided by two this two is given in the formula now if you uh, cancel out this what you will have six minus six is zero and the remaining thing is minus so minus one is the formal charge of oxygen number three So option B is the correct answer for this question. Okay, got it. So if they are asking you to find out the formal charge of oxygen two, what you have to do? The same way, the total number of valence electron for this oxygen will be six, and the two load pairs are there, so there will be four electrons. And since two bonds are here, each bond contains uh, two two electrons, so two bonds, four electrons will be there. It will be bonded electron will be four divided by two. So when you cancel out, you will get six minus six, which is equal to zero. So the formal charge of oxygen number two is zero, and the formal charge of oxygen number three is minus. Okay, for oxygen number three, it is minus. Got it? So let's move on to the next question. Question number sixty-six. The major product of the following reaction is. So an alkene, a cyclic system with an alkene is given, double bonded uh, alkene is given, and it is reacting with HBr and with strong heat. So now what happens? 
So the first step is protonation, right? Protonation by the double bond. So what happens here is, so let me draw the mechanism for you. So here is the double bond. Okay. So first of all, it is getting protonated. The alkyl will attack this hydrogen, double bonded. So this hydrogen will go to this carbon. So ultimately we will get we will get a carbocation here. The hydrogen has gone here. Okay. So we got a carbocation there. Now what happens here? The ring expansion occurs. So one of this bond breaks. This bond breaks and forms the bond here. And because of this, a six-membered ring is formed. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. New bond is formed now. So six-membered ring is formed. Now this is the carbocation for us, and these two are the methyl groups which is there. Got it? So if this is carbon number one. Carbon number 2, carbon number 3, 4, 5, 6 for the second structure. Then here is the carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Now in the sixth carbon, there is a formation of carbocation. Now this carbocation, you can see it is CH2, right? It is present, sorry, it is present on uh, CH. It is present on CH. So it is located on CH. So CH containing a positive charge is called as secondary carbocation. This is the secondary carbocation. Now, the more stable carbocation, which is tertiary carbocation, can be formed from this product or from this intermediate by a shift, which is called as methyl shift. So, these two are methyl groups, right? CH3, CH3. Now, one of the methyl group from carbon 1 is now going to shift it to carbon 6. Okay, it is called as 1, 2. 1, 2 methyl shift. So, it is now going to shift. And because of this shift, what am I going to get? I am going to get a compound like this, where one methyl will be carbon number 1 and another methyl will be in carbon number 6. Got it? Now, since this methyl group have shifted to this fifth carbon, there is a formation of carbocation in carbon number one. Since one group is shifted, one bond is less now, so there is a formation of carbocation. Now, to uh, neutralize or to stabilize that carbocation, in the next step, the Br minus from the reactant, Br minus is now going to attack the hydrogen which is present adjacent to this carbocation and the electrons will be shifted here. So because of this, what I will get? Beta hydrogen is eliminated from the carbocation and there is a formation of double bond and one methyl is already. So this is your final product. And where it is given? This number ring with the double bond between two methyl groups. So it is given an option D. It is tilted link. So option D is the answer. So first you protonate and because of this protonation, the carbocation is forming. Then ring expansion occurs. So this is the ring expansion step. Ring expansion is because of the uh, stability. Okay. When you expand the ring, five membered is becoming a six membered ring. So a very uh, less steric is observed in six member and it is more stable. So because of that, ring expansion is occurring. And uh, since the Carbocation which is formed after ring expansion is secondary. The more stable than secondary carbocation, that is tertiary carbocation, can be formed from this by a methyl shift. So we are shifting the methyl from one carbon to its adjacent carbon. So it is called as one two methyl shift. And because of this, you can see the carbon is attached to three different carbon, which is called as tertiary carbon. Tertiary carbocation is formed. Now to stabilize that, the alpha hydrogen that is which is uh, uh, attached to the hydrogen which is attached to uh, adjacent to the carbocation is getting eliminated by the nucleophile which is called as Br minus and uh, the electrons between CH bond is uh, shifted and forms the alpha with six member ring. Okay. So option D will be the major product of this reaction. Got it? I hope this is clear to all of you.
Now coming to question number 67. You can see that a reaction is given and the sequence of reaction is given and a compound, a given compound in the reactant is treated with Al2O3 at a 50 degrees Celsius to give compound A. And compound A is treated with HIDAGOH to give compound B. So we have to find out the product B. Okay. So first, uh, let me uh, write the. Let me write. But Me is nothing but Me is nothing but methyl group. Okay. Two methyl groups are attached to the first carbon. So this is CH, and to this CH, two methyl groups are attached, and this CH is attached to one more CH with OH. And one more methyl group is attached. Okay, this is the given compound. And it is treated with Al2O3 on heat. So, what is the role of this Al2O3? Who is this Al2O3? Aluminium oxide is a dehydrating agent. It is a dehydrating agent. It will eliminate the water molecule from the species to which is getting reacted. Okay, now. Uh, from which carbon the hydrogen is going to get eliminated? Okay. That is the doubt, right? So, the hydrogen will be eliminated from the beta carbon. So, who is beta carbon? OH attached carbon is alpha and this is your beta. Okay. So, two beta we are having but uh, the uh, hydrogen will be eliminated from this particular beta hydrogen. So, it will come and take out this hydrogen and the bond is shifted here and the OH is coming out. So basically from the reactant H2O molecule is coming out. So because of this elimination we are getting a structure like this with a double bond and a methyl. And this is compound A. This is compound A. Now this compound A is treated first it is treated with HA. Addition of HA to the double bond. Is called as Markovnikov addition. This is called as Markovnikov. What is Markovnikov addition? The negative part of the addition molecule goes to the double bonded carbon, which has very less number of hydrogen atoms. Okay, so these two are the double bonded carbon, alkene carbon, and H plus I minus. This is the negative part of the addition molecule. So this negative part of the addition molecule goes to the carbon, which has very less number of hydrogen. So you can see. If this is taken as carbon number 1 and this is carbon number 2, carbon number 1 is having 0 hydrogen and carbon number 2 is having 1 hydrogen. So, less number is carbon 1. So, break the bond, add iodine to the first carbon and H to the second carbon. So, because of this, we get CH3, CI and Me. Single bond, CH. Now, CH2 and M. So, this is your compound. Now, this compound is treated with, secondly, it is treated with AgOH. It is treated with Ag and OH. So, this is nothing but the nucleophilic substitution, right? So, the Ag plus and OH minus is there. OH nucleophile is now coming and substituting this I minus nucleophile. Nucleophilic substitution. So, what we will get? We will get Me attached with the carbon. And now iodine is substituted by OH nucleophile with the CH2 and Me. Okay. So this is your compound B. This is your compound B. So now we have to check for this compound. So it is a two methyl group attached to the C and OH. That is option A, right? So option A is the correct answer for this question. Okay. Coming to the next question. Coming to question number 68 for you. So again an organic question. Sequence of reaction is given and the reactant is there. It is treated with H plus giving compound A. And then with ROH, with alcohol uh, in acidic condition, it is form giving compound B. And that compound B is a major product. We have to find out that major product. Okay. So let's start with the given compound. It is a five-membered uh, compound with the one heteroatom oxygen in it and the CH2O which is attached. Okay. Now it is treated with H plus. So what happens? The lone pair, the two lone pairs which is there on oxygen, from those two lone pair, one of the lone pair will come and protonate. Okay. So 
we will get so we will get CH two O H two and plus. Now H two O goes out. H two O goes out. It takes the electrons which is there in that bond and it goes out as H two. So H two O leaves out, and there is a formation of there is a formation of carbocation here. There is a formation of carbocation. Now what happens? So the ring is now going to expand. This bond is going to break, and it is going to oxygen. Oxygen is now going to form the bond with the carbocation containing carbon to give the uh, product. So we will get a six-membered ring because of this ring expansion. So because of this ring expansion, there is a formation of six-membered ring with carbocation here in this cup. Okay. Got it. Now, to stabilize this, or uh, this compound A is now reacting with R O H. Is now reacting with R O H. So it is R O minus and H plus, right? So this R O minus will come and attack this plus carbocation. Nucleophile is now going to attack the electrophile to give O R. Okay. So now this is your Major product B. This is your major product B from the given reaction, and it is given in option B. Option B is the correct answer. Okay, got it? Fine. So coming to question number seventy-four, in which of these uh, equations does the heat of reaction represent the standard enthalpy of formation of the product? Standard enthalpy of formation of the product. So first of all, we need to know what is standard enthalpy of formation. So it is delta H of naught, right? So it is nothing but the one mole of the substance. One mole of the substance formed. One mole of the substance formed from its constituent. Elements one mole of the substance formed from its constituent constituent the elements is called as standard enthalpy of formation. Okay. Now using this statement, you check uh, for all the given four reactions. Okay. Now you see that N two O four. From gaseous state is getting converted to two moles of NO. You can see two moles of NO was formed. No, only one mole of the substance should be formed. That one from its constituent element. The constituent element of this NO2, the nitrogen is N2, and for oxygen it is O2. Two moles is formed, and it is also not formed from its constituent element. So, uh, the first reaction cannot fall under this category. And coming to the second reaction, you can see. Carbon in gaseous state is reacting with oxygen. So the native state of carbon is graphite form of carbon. The constituent element for the carbon is uh, carbon in graphite form. But here carbon is given in gaseous form, so it cannot be the uh, answer. It will not fall. Heat of reaction will not cannot be represented in terms of delta H of naught. Okay. Coming to option uh, I mean statement reaction three, N two O five is formed, and the nitrogen and oxygen are the elements given in N two O five, and the constituent element of nitrogen is N two. Constituent element in the sense, the elements that is present in the atmosphere uh, in its native form. The native form of the nitrogen is N two, and uh, for oxygen it is O two, and one mole is also formed. So this reaction, heat of reaction, represents the standard enthalpy formation for equation three. And coming to uh, equation four, again you see, you can see one mole of carbon monoxide is formed, but it is formed from the carbon in gaseous state. So carbon should be in the graphite state. Okay, that is the native form of carbon. So this reaction also doesn't represent the heat of reaction. Okay, from the standard enthalpy formation. So only the equation C 
be represents the standard entity of formation of the product okay so option a will be the correct answer for this question got it yes coming to the next question that is question number 75 calculate the standard free energy change for the formation of methane at 298 kelvin the value of delta lecture not for ch4 is given and the entropy values of carbon in graphite form hydrogen and uh, methane gases are given and we have to find out the standard free energy change we have to find out the standard free energy free energy is nothing but the gibbs free energy right so we have to find out delta g naught so delta g naught is nothing but delta h minus t delta s so delta delta g naught is equal to delta h naught minus t delta s naught and s naught values are given so from this what you do you find out the delta s naught value so how to find out the uh, delta s naught value so s naught value can be find out from the entropy of the product entropy standard molar entropy of the products minus the molar uh, entropy of the reactants product minus the reactants okay now who are the products and who are the reactants so it is a formation of methane at 298 kelvin right so carbon reacts with hydrogen to form methane now balance this equation by putting two so methane is the product and carbon and hydrogen are the reactants got it now what you do you just substitute so the product is ch4 and the entropy for ch4 is yeah for ch4 it is 186 right it is 186.3 which is the product minus reactant so who are the reactant carbon and hydrogen both are the reactants and the s naught value for carbon is 5.70 it is 5.70 plus there are two hydrogen right only for one hydrogen is not value is given for two hydrogen you have to multiply by two so two into 130.7 2 into 130.7. So, on uh, substituting this, uh, yeah, this is in terms of joule per kelvin per mole. So, when you solve this, you will get minus 80.8 joule per kelvin per mole as the answer. Okay. But here you can see delta H F naught is given in terms of kilojoule per mole. So, what I have to do? Convert this joule to kilojoule. That is 80 minus 80.8 to 10 power minus 3 kilojoule per kelvin per mole. Okay, kilojoule per kelvin per mole. Now, this is the delta S naught value. Now, uh, delta S is uh, there and uh, temperature is also given in the question. Delta H is also there. Just substitute all the values here in this equation and get the final answer. So, delta G naught will be equal to delta H is minus 74.81, right? So, it is minus 74.81 minus temperature is 298 Kelvin and delta S value is minus 80 point, minus 80 point, 8 into 10 power minus 3, okay? Now, on substituting minus 74.81, when you multiply 298 with 80, 0.8 and uh, you will get some around plus 24.07 in kilojoule per okay so now on adding on and subtracting these two we will get minus 50.74 kilojoule per mole as the final answer for this question so option c will be the correct answer got it option c will be the Correct answer for this question. Got it? Yeah. Now coming to the next question, that is question number uh, seventy-seven. 
Four moles of an ideal gas at one bar and three hundred Kelvin are compressed at a constant temperature by applying six bars of constant pressure. How much work is done by the gas in the process? So let me write the given values first. So the number of moles for the system is four. Okay, and the pressure value that is initial pressure P one will be equal is equal to one bar. And the final pressure you can see they are applying the external pressure this a six bar that is I can write P two as six bar okay which is nothing but the external pressure it is a constant pressure so it is a kind of a isothermal irreversible process it is isothermal so thermal means same temperature so it is an isothermal irreversible Process because constant external pressure is applied, so process can be reversed. Now to find out the work done for the irreversible isothermal process, the formula is minus P external to P two minus P. P external is nothing but the final pressure that is the P two. Okay, this is nothing but your external. Got it? Now volume is not given in the question. So what we have to do? Only pressure is given. So we know that P V is equal to N R T, right? So from this, what is V? V is equal to N R T by P. So the substitute N R T by P in place of P, so it will be equal to minus. It is your P two actually external pressure, so P two into N R T by P two minus N R T by P one. Now substitute this P two in the uh, to both the components. So what you will get P two P two gets cancelled. So I will get the minus N R T. So minus N R T is there, and it is taken out. If I take this out, I will get one here, and uh, minus uh, put this uh, multiply P two inside. So here I will get P two by P one. Okay. Now substitute the values of E N. Number of moles is four and R values. Ah, uh, so the answer is given in terms of joules. So in terms of joules, the universal gas constant is eight point three one four joule joules, and uh, the temperature is given as three hundred Kelvin, and uh, one minus P two is six and P one is one. Okay. So the on substituting, you will get four nine eight eight four joule. Which is nothing but forty nine point eight kilojoule. So it is the work done for this process. So forty nine plus forty nine point eight. So option B, option B will be the correct answer. Okay. So here we are learning the this formula and we are substituting the values of P in terms of N R T by P two. That's very easy. Okay. Just to uh, try to find out the uh, terms which are given in the question and apply the formula which is relevant to that question to get the uh, final answer. Okay? And you have to be very uh, careful with the units and the sign conditions. Got it? Okay. So let me move on to question number seventy-nine. So consider the following three halides. Ah, uh, three halides are uh, given to you. One is ethyl chloride and another one is vinyl chloride. The last one is chlorobenzene. So arrange the CCL bond length of these compounds in decreasing order. So we have to arrange this in decreasing order. So let me draw the structure. So it is CH3, CH2, and Cl, right? So here CCL bond is there, but this carbon is sp3 hybridized to carbon. Okay, and coming to the second structure. It is CH2 double bond CH and Cl. So this carbon is sp2 hybridized to carbon. Okay, and there will be yeah the delocalization of the electrons. Now coming to compound number three. Compound number three, it is it is the chlorobenzene. It is the chlorobenzene. So it is chloro benzene, and this is the CCL bond. And here, phenyl ring undergoes delocalization, and because of this, 
uh, even though this carbon is sp2 hybridized, it attains some partial double bond character. So the CCl bonded chlorobenzene attains some partial double bond character. That means partial double bond, double bond character. Okay. So uh, when the number of bonds increases between the carbon and chlorine, bond order of the system increases, right? So bond order is inversely proportional to bond length. If bond order is more, bond length is very less. So among these three compounds, so last compound, compound number three is having the more bond, uh, bond order. So means it will have the less bond length. Okay, it will have the less bond length only because of this partial uh, double bond character. So compound number three will have the very least bond length value compared to the other two compounds. So it is given an option A only. Okay, then comes your resinylic system. Then comes our al uh, alkyl chlorides. Got it? So alkyl chlorides, they have carbon chlorine single bond, which is pure, which is, which is a pure sigma bond. There is no partial double bond character in it. So it will have the highest bond length value. Okay. So option A will be the correct answer for this question. Now coming to question number 81. So here is again an uh, uh, order, the correct order of the plus M effect. Plus M effect is, what is plus M effect? It is mesomeric effect, right? So it is mesomeric effect. So what is mesomeric effect? Resonance effect is otherwise called as mesomeric effect. So plus M effect in the sense, the electrons, uh, the groups which are donating the electrons to the ring, those groups are called as plus M groups and the effect that is observed in those systems are called as meso uh, plus M effect. So here you have to find out the correct order of plus M effect of nitrogen containing functional group on benzene ring among the given compounds. So all the four given compounds are having uh, nitrogen group and uh, which will donate more easily among these four. So first compound is aniline. So here to this nitrogen, two hydrogens are attached. And here, since this nitrogen is having the lone pair of electron, it will donate the electrons to the ring. So it is an electron donating group. And coming to the second compound, there also we have nitrogen, which has one lone pair. But we have two methyl groups. So these two methyl groups, what they will do, they undergo hyperconjugation. Okay. So when this nitrogen gives out this electron here, so they will try to uh, undergo hyperconjugation. So the effect will be a little bit very less. Now coming to the third compound, we have CH3CO group here. CH3CO group is called as acyl group. So this acyl group is electron withdrawing group. So what it will do, it will withdraw the lone pair of electrons towards itself, uh, making a very less electron density available for this ring. So this group cannot act as an electron donating group. That is, it cannot act as a plus M group to the ring. Okay, so the effect will be very less. And coming to the last compound, you can see there are two CH3 uh, groups. There are two acyl groups. So, again, this particular load pair of electrons is there on the nitrogen uh, to donate to the phenyl ring. It is not at all available. Okay, so the effect is very, very less. So compound 4 will come at last, then your compound 3, then upon hydrogen and CH3, hydrogen containing uh, group is more electron donating in nature. So uh, in compound 1, you can observe the plus M effect more than compound 2, then compound 3 and compound 4. Okay, so option 3 or C will be the correct answer for this question. Now let's uh, go with uh, question number 83. Uh, so this question say, uh, says that in which of the following parts of carbocations, the first carbocation is more stable than the second. So it is uh, such an easy question for you. So in each uh, pairs, uh, two, two compounds are given. So let us check. So in case of the first uh, two compounds, so, positive charge is there on the carbon, uh, which is attached with a vinylic uh, system. So, what is a vinyl group? So, there will be two carbon, which is double bonded. So, this is called as vinylic. 
cation is attached to the vinylic system and uh, this carbocation can be stabilized by the uh, carbon vinylic carbon so the electrons will get delocalized and they will come and help here so that is stable and when you see to come to the second compound carbocation is there but there is no adjacent double bond to help that carbocation which is electrolytation okay so the charge is localized here but here delocalization occurs to help the carbocation so delocalization will increase the stability right so the first compound is getting stabilized by resonance so that is more stable compared to the second compound okay so first carbocation is more stable so that will come so uh, compound the uh, pair or one will come and coming to uh, pair two so here you can see the carbocation is there but adjacent to that nitrogen is there which has one lone pair which is adjacent to that carbocation so it can help the carbocation easily okay and uh, and can stabilize but when you come to the second compound carbocation is attached to the oxygen which has two lone pair oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen so the more electronegative oxygen will try to pull the electrons towards itself already the carbocation is electron deficient and now this oxygen which is more electronegative is still pulling the electrons towards itself so what happens because of this the stability of the second compound decreases and the stability of the first compound increases okay so the first compound is more stable than the second compound so this pair will also fall under this category now coming to the third option in the third option uh, carbocation is there okay but adjacent to that carbocation we have an sp3 hybridized carbon okay so this sp3 hybridized carbon cannot uh, help this carbocation but in the second compound where oxygen is there it can help this carbocation even though it pulls the electron towards itself it helps because through this through its lone pair because it is adjacent to that so it can help it can help compared to the first compound so here the second compound is more stable than the first compound because in first compound no helping is possible but in second compound helping is possible through oxygen got it so the second compound is more stable than the first so it will not fall under this category c will uh, three will not come now coming to the last option uh so there is a carbocation and here one methyl group and here one propyl group is present for the first compound and in second compound both are ethyl groups both are so here h2 is wrong and only ch should be there ch should be there because it is a secondary carbocation it is a printing mistake in your question paper now so here it is methyl and this is propyl and here both are ethyl so both ethyl groups will create the steric uh, hindrance that is it is uh, more crowded second carbocation is more crowded here in uh, case of ethyl attached system whereas here one side it is crowded with propyl but another side a small methyl group is there so crowdedness is very less so nucleophile can come and attack this carbocation more easily compared to the second compound so the first compound is more stable compared to the second compound okay so it will come so 1 2 and 4 they are coming so option b will be the correct answer for this okay the electron donating capacity electron donating capacity in case of this fourth compound it is uh, a very uh, less since both are ethyl they can donate to a particular extent but uh, propyl can donate more electrons okay so which stabilizes the first one so option b is the correct answer okay now coming to the next question the correct stability order correct stability order of the following carbocations is so you can see four carbocations are given and o which is attached in the first three compounds now o h is an electron donating group. if electron donating group is present in the ring then it stabilizes the 
it stabilizes it stabilizes the carbon cation okay now that electron donating group should be present at ortho and para position then only it stabilizes the carbon cation okay that too especially when electron donating group is present at para position it stabilizes more compared to the ortho okay now using this concept you try to find out the answer now when the first compound it is ortho and this is meta and this is para substituted and here no substitution is there now the para substituted compound is uh, more stabilizing so para third compound will be uh, more stable so it has to come first right so option b or option c should be the correct answer then after this para ortho should come ortho means adjacent meta means alternative and para means opposite okay then uh, uh, next to this para ortho comes so compound 1 comes so obviously option 3 of c is the correct answer i'll uh, we'll check with uh, the other also then comparing this meta substituted and uh, no substituted system the group which is attached at meta position since this oxygen is more electronegative in nature it will try to pull the electrons towards itself making this carbocation more electron efficient it is destabilizing actually it is oh which is destabilizing it is destabilizing by pulling the electron towards itself through electronegativity okay whereas in case of compound 4 we don't have any such electronegative atoms attached to the ring so there is no such pulling of electrons okay so four is more stable and the compound 2 is the very least stable among the four compounds the correct order is option c okay then coming to question number 86 the number of sigma and pi bonds in the following molecule so this is a, one of the very easiest question right so you can see there are two uh, six member ring and coming to the first uh, six member ring so hydrogen is there each carbon should have four bonds and to satisfy the valency of each carbon this time i'm putting the hydrogen and is satisfying here and here are hydrogen so this is the complete structure now the sigma bonds are nothing but the single bonds right so let us calculate 1 2 3 4 5 6 so these six are carbon hydrogen sigma bonds now we will calculate the carbon carbon and carbon oxygen sigma bond so here among this double bond one is sigma so 6 plus 1 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 here 13 14 15 16 17 and here 18 and 9 so totally 19 sigma bonds are present and how many pi bond so in a double bond one is sigma and another one is pi right so 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 So there are five pi bonds. So nineteen sigma and fifteen pi bonds is the answer. Okay. Now the number of primary, secondary, and tertiary carbons in the following structure are respectively. So what is the primary uh, carbon? If a carbon is attached to only one carbon, it is called as primary. So like that, how many carbons we are having? But the carbon which is attached to only one carbon, so it is this one. Two, three. So number of primary carbons are three. Secondary is a carbon attached with the two carbon. So you can see this carbon is attached with the two carbon. Here also the same one, two, three, four, and uh, this one, this carbon. Okay, five and here six. Six carbons are secondary. And how many tertiary? Tertiary means a carbon which is attached with three carbon. So this carbon is attached with the three carbon. So this is tertiary, and this is again a tertiary. And uh, what else is there? And yeah, this carbon. This carbon is attached with three, three carbons too. So there are three tertiary carbons. Okay. So there are three primary, so three primary, six secondary, and three tertiary. So option B will be the correct answer for this question. Okay. Now coming to question number ninety-two. So I'm coming to question number ninety-two. So the compound is given. You have to find out the major product of this reaction. So the same way, 
the alkene will come and protonate this hcl alkene will come and protonate protonate this hcl so because of this protonation we get a carbo cation okay we get a carbo cation so there is a uh, methyl group and there is a formation of uh, carbo here here and carbon here is a formation of carbon now the ring expansion occurs the ring expansion occurs one of the bond breaks now this is the ring expansion step and because of this ring expansion we are getting a six membered ring uh, with uh, two methyl groups attached here and the one methyl group here this is the carbocation okay now to this carbocation cl minus will come and it will attack this carbocation to give the desired product this is your Okay, so option C, option C will be the correct answer for this question. Got it? This carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now carbon six. Now here it is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Got it? The sixth carbon is attached with the first carbon. Now in the sixth carbon we get a carbo cation. Sixth carbon we get a carbo cation. Okay. Yes. Now on rearrangement we will get the thing accordingly. Okay. Yes. Now coming to a question number ninety-three. An alkene which has molecular weight of eighty-six point bromine agent gives only two monobromo derivatives. Except the uh, stereo is the alkene. So here it is given there are only two monobromo derivatives. Means only two different types of hydrogen should be there in the compound. Okay. So you can check in the first compound these are uh, these belong to one type primary and these two are secondary and this is tertiary. So there are three different types here. And here here all these three are uh, one type and this is one other type. This is one more type. If you substitute these hydrogens with bromine, you will get Three different bromo product. Whereas in case of option C, these terminal uh, hydrogens belong to one type, and uh, the internal hydrogen they belong to one type. So only two different hyd uh, hydrogens are there. One is primary, and another one is uh, tertiary. So two uh, mono bromo derivatives are possible. And here, right, this uh, option D, we have only one type of hydrogen, no? You substitute any of these salt well hydrogen by bromo, bromo you will get only one product, one type of product. So here only one type of hydrogen is present. So in option C only we have two different types of uh, hydrogen, which is primary and tertiary. So two monobromo uh, derivatives are obtained from the compound C. Okay. Now coming to question number ninety-four. What is the major product expected by the chlorination? In the presence of anhydrous AlCl3 of para methyl anisotropic. So actually, this is an example for electrophilic aromatic substitution. Uh, in that, we have five reaction, but the first reaction halogenation is given here. When you uh, halogenate, when you chlorinate the para methyl anisotropic. So this is your para para methyl. Anisol. OCH3 attached to benzene is anisol, and the opposite of that one methyl group is there. This is para methyl anisol. Now, when I halogenate this in presence of anhydrous AlCl3 with the chlorine, I will get an electrophile which is Cl plus. Now, this electrophile, where it will go and substitute in the ring? That is the question. The major product of the substitution we have to find out. Okay. Now, OCH3 and CH3, two groups are there. Among these two groups, OCH3 group is more activating, more activating group than CH3 alkene. So the major product will be in accordance with OCH3. So we all know that only ortho and para product is possible. Now to this OCH3, 
these two are the ortho position and the no para pos para position is already occupied by ch3 so the para substituted the para chlorine substituted product is not possible so it can substitute only in the ortho either one of the ortho position so where it is substituted chlorine should get substituted in the ortho position to och3 so it is given in option c right so here only chlorine is adjacent ortho to och3 okay so option c will be the correct answer now coming to question number 95 which among the following is an incorrect comparison so of boiling point of alkene so for boiling point we have two relation one is if the molecular masses are different if the molecular masses are different then what you have to do boiling point is directly proportional to the molecular mass the one that is having the highest molecular mass will have the highest boiling point now if the molecular masses are same like for isomers the boiling point is inversely proportional to branch the boiling point is inversely proportional to branch the one that is having the least branchy will have the highest boiling point okay so these two are the relation now you can check let uh, let us start from uh, option a so in option a we have a four uh, carbon containing system in both the compounds so here in the first compound we don't have any branching and in second compound we have one branch molecular masses are same so use the second relation the compound which has a very least branching is having the highest boiling point so it is correct so the given statement is correct okay and the given order is correct and coming to the compound in option b so it is a five carbon containing system in both the compound so molecular mass should be same and here the one which is having one branch is having the highest boiling point that is wrong right the compound which is having uh, least branching value should have the highest boiling point so here one branch is there here no branch so the no branch containing compound only should have the highest boiling point but the order is different so this is the incorrect comparison which is the correct answer for this question so in compound c you can check 1 2 3 4 5 five carbon containing system is the first compound and three carbon containing is the second compound so here molecular masses are different means the one which is having the highest molecular mass the one which is having the highest number of carbon will have the highest boiling point so order is correct and now the above cannot be the answer because option b is the correct one okay now coming to the last question for today's class the question so an organic question it ends with an organic question so a uh, compound is given to you it is treated with magnesium and ether so this is the grignard reagent uh, forming reaction right now this magnesium where will it go it will, whether it will go to c b r bond or it will get inserted between c c l bond so that should be the doubt for us right so now c b r bond is weaker C B R bond is C B R bond is weaker than C C L bond. So since bromine is bigger in size compared to chlorine, C B R bond breaks first. So magnesium goes and occupies uh, that uh, position. So here the given compound uh, is treated with the uh, magnesium and ether to give this form okay now this compound is treated with the d2o so like h2o we have to add h and oh d and oh od we have to add. just break the bond od is added here and d is added here so we get a five membered ring with the d attached here and the cl is already there and uh, plus mg pr od is out okay now this compound this compound is treated with sodium in ether so this reaction is called as woods reaction right this is woods reaction that is two moles of alkyl halide two moles of this compound will react to the na okay so let me write for you so this is a five membered cycle this is the first mole and uh, this is the second mole this is the second mole of the compound and it is treated with two sodium so two nacl will come out and these two compounds will uh, form the new carbon carbon bond okay so it is given in option b the design product is 
given the compound A is in option B. Okay, so that is the correct answer. So I hope uh, the session is very useful for all of you. Okay, I hope I have cleared all your doubts in the session. Okay, uh, thank you so much for listening the uh, question and answer discussion uh, video of AIT 5 for class 11 deep solutions. Okay. Thank you so much for all of you.